Hello, my name is Alex Veach. I am the General Manager for Public Policy at Logistics UK. And this is my uh, presentation for the Total Supply Chain Summit. Excuse me, with a bit of technical glitch here. I do apologise. Um, the contents for my presentation. Um, I'm going to do a quick introduction to my organisation. I'm going to set the scene about where we see the challenges for EU exit. Um, I'm going to talk about exports to uh, the EU and imports from the EU. And um, I'm going to finish with um, a slide or two with advice and guidance. OK, uh, a word of introduction about Logistics UK. Uh, we are the largest uh, business group in the freight transport sector. We have over 18,000 members and we represent businesses across all the modes and um, also businesses who import and export goods as well. Um, and we are one of the leading voices for the supply chain sector um, in the UK. So setting the scene, next section. Uh, so we are now uh, at the end of September. Um, we are right in the middle of negotiation season and also preparation season. And so uh, we have been told by um, our Prime Minister and by the European negotiation team that there must be uh, the outline of a deal done, a free trade agreement deal done by the middle of October. Um, otherwise, it is unlikely there will be a free trade agreement agreed for January. And that will just about leave enough time to get the agreement ratified in the different um, uh, institutions. At the same time, in the logistics sector, we also know that the differences between a deal and a no deal are, um, are there are a lot of differences and important ones, but um, there are many, many things that businesses should be doing already to prepare uh, for a um, either a deal or a no deal outcome. And the thing I want to stress in this presentation is I'm talking today about things that are future proof in the sense that they are things that businesses can and should be doing now, whether or not there is a deal. So uh, another important uh, point to set the scene, uh, you will have seen in the media ever since the referendum really um, concerns raised by ourselves and other stakeholders about the potential for delays um, in Kent as we uh, use those uh, uh, important routes through Dover and Folkestone, the Channel Tunnel and uh, the Dover Calais crossing to move a very large proportion of our EU trade. It does not take much to cause a significant uh, traffic delay on the M20. Uh, you will have seen that um, recently again. Um, and as the table shows, uh, there is a very high volume of RORO moved uh, through uh, Dover in any given year. What isn't shown there is that there's also a very high amount of RORO moved through the, the Channel Tunnel as well. So that is a really key corridor for our trade with the EU. So I'm going to look at exports now and again focus on what businesses can do. Uh, this uh, chart is taken from a very good and useful product from the government called the Border Operating Model. And for any of you that are um, starting to think in more detail about your Brexit preparations, this product is really good to look at. I've got a link at the end that will take you there. And one of the things it spells out quite clearly are the different steps that um, exporters have to make um, depending where they sit in the supply chain. So if you, if you are in the, uh, pro in the business of selling goods to the EU, if you are the exporter, you will need to make sure you have got um, all your preparations done to trade. Now that includes uh, finding a customs agent or potentially doing some customs work yourself, but importantly also includes um, finding all the registrations and licenses that you might need depending on your line of work on your product um, in order to pass through the EU border. So if you are working in controlled goods, if you're on agri-food, if you're on pharmaceuticals and many other sectors, you will need particular documentation to be ready for that. Um, now, our members typically are those who moves, uh, move other people's goods around and we are involved in what they call the core export process. And this is about making a declaration for the trader, um, making sure that the goods are able to pass through borders uh, um, seamlessly and quickly. Um, and um, in many cases, working with you on 
what kind of customs procedures will be used. So this is well worth a look um, and just to hopefully clarify at least procedurally what needs to be done when and by whom. Uh, now I want to give you a flavour of the challenges for the uh, uh, haulage sector uh, arising from EU exit. So uh, the hauliers who move goods internationally will have to interface with up to nine different systems um, from January, depending exactly what they do. Um, so you see them uh, listed in the in the bubbles here. Uh, um, we've got four different systems that are being introduced by the UK government, and there are five systems that are going to be necessary to do uh, trade with the EU. Um, now I'm going to go into these. Uh, I'm not going to cover them in detail, but I'm just going to go through them briefly one by one to give you a sense of what the logistics industry is dealing with here. Uh, so one of the uh, things that the UK government's introducing is a, is a project, a program called Smart Freight. This is a traffic management tool aimed at reducing traffic delays uh, in Kent in January. Now we are uh, more worried about exports than imports because the EU is introducing full rest of world trade procedures from January the 1st. Uh, the UK is taking a different approach to imports and I'll cover that later. Um, so in order to manage the flow, uh, the government is going to be um, uh, requiring that if you're moving goods to Kent, uh, you must uh, do your very best to make sure that your uh, haul, your truck is ready to cross the border before it even leaves the, the customer's premises. And so what will be really important if you are an exporter is to order with your haulier, uh, with your 3PL, whoever you use to do the transportation of your goods to make sure that you are giving them all the information that they need to be able to move across the border in a timely fashion. Again, I do apologise for the uh, slowness of the slides moving here. I'm just trying to move to the next slide. Hopefully that will work in a second now. Here we go. Um, so uh, uh, another system that will be required from January is uh, something called safety and security declarations. They will be required for exports to the EU. Um, they are typically done as a combination declaration with the uh, ex customs export declaration. However, um, the quirk in the regulations uh, uh, stipulate that if the uh, safety and security declaration has not been done uh, by a customs agent or a forwarder, then the haulier has the legal responsibility. And so we're working with our members who are in this business to make sure they've got a way to make these very specific and detailed declarations if they need to do so. So it's a stop gap fallback measure. So I'm not, not, not getting into detail, but just to give you the flavour of the kind of work that we're doing with our members um, in some of the much, much more detailed issues here. Um, and um, the final uh, IT system from the UK government is the Goods Vehicle Movement Service. And this is a, a very clever system. We are working hard to make sure it lands well with our members. And what will this will do is provide a way to electronically simplify moving goods through customs borders by a roll and roll off uh, ferry. So there will be a tag applied to every single consignment that's in a trailer. Though the, all those consignments will be linked electronically to the uh, tractor unit and trailer combination, creating a single movement reference number that will be submitted uh, both to the UK government, to the Customs Authority, HMRC, but also through to the operators of ferries and the Eurotunnel operator as well. And so uh, what this will mean is that, uh, excuse me, as my slides are not playing ball, I'll try and go back. I'll just finish the verbal content on GVMS. What this will mean is um, a simplified uh, electronic message to make sure that trucks uh, will be pre-cleared before they depart from UK uh, to EU journeys. Now, um, this system will be introduced first for movements from Great Britain to Northern Ireland and for some import journeys, and then will be rolled out for all import export journeys from July. So again, with an apology for my uh, slide having jumped ahead of me, um, I'm now going to just talk briefly with one slide about the systems that um, are put in place by the European Union member states, which um, haulier members will have, to, our haulier members will have to know how to use. Um, the French have got a system called SI Brexit, which they introduced for the previous no deal preparations. 
uh, this will pr provide a barcode to drivers so to make sure that to, to enable them to proceed uh, once the French authorities have received the right uh, customs paperwork. And there are similar systems being introduced in the Republic of Ireland, in Belgium and in the Netherlands. Uh, we've got a lot of information about the Belgian and uh, Netherlands systems and we're working hard to get more details of the Irish system. So the reason I'm explaining this to you uh, in this top level way is just to say, uh, you know, these are the four biggest countries between them. They, Matt, they, they are, uh, account for over 80 percent of our railroad trade with the EU. And uh, it's really important that in the logistics side, uh, hauliers uh, are able to interface with these systems so that um, vehicles can pass through EU borders and out the other side into the continental EU and into the Republic of Ireland with a minimum delay. So again, uh, four systems here in addition to the, the various UK systems which I said before. And now my slides have perhaps got up themselves. A bit like, yes, OK, fantastic. So that is the export. So again, pinch points to be expected for the export journey in January. We, we are expecting uh, potential disruption um, through uh, um, the short straits. Uh, there is still time to uh, to mitigate that, but it absolutely relies upon um, all of you guys in the audience who are in the export trade particularly. Please, please, please get ready, get your paperwork ready, get your licenses, your certificates, please get your documentation ready so that you can present your forwarder, your 3PL, your haulier, whoever you use with the right documentation because if and if there's a critical mass of businesses that do that there will there should be far uh, fewer delays even potentially very few delays at all but it does depend on you guys doing your bit and, and our our members in the logistics end uh, doing our bit as well and as you can see from the slides uh, there is a significant challenge just on the logistics side alone to get everything ready okay so i'm now going to talk more about imports from the eu there's a lot less here on the logistics side, but much more for traders to be aware of, for importers to be aware of. So um, the government has introduced what they call a staged approach to EU import control. So over a six month period, there will be, um, for the most part, very little difference to the logistics side of movements from the EU. Um, there will not be um, border checks for goods crossing from the EU to the UK. There will not be the need for the safety and security declarations uh, for inbound flows uh, that I, I briefly talked about before. Um, there will not, at least the first three months, be any uh, phytosanitary checks, so i.e. Um, agri-food checks at all. They will be gradually phased in from April, uh, but not on day one. Now, all that said, for importers listening to this, don't be fooled. You know, you guys have to do um, um, a lot of in your offices to make sure that you're accounting for all the duties that you owe HMRC and that you have a system in place to declare those and to pay the duty. And there are ways to make it simpler. There are a lot of ways you can work with customs agents to do things on your behalf, but you need to be aware that just because the flow is easier on the import side, there is still lots of requirements on you as importers to uh, declare what you need to do uh, to the to the tax man. Hopefully my slides will keep up with me now. Yes, they have. OK, so just some basic things. Uh, this is really, really basic. I'm sure you will know this, but you must get your uh, EORI numbers done. Um, you must get commodity code for your goods ready. Um, you must know what the customs value of your goods are. Uh, if you're using an agent, they'll be able to help you with this. Uh, the key thing is really the commodity code. Um, the um, and, and, you know, you should be able to uh, unless you are a business with with um, a, a, a perhaps a troubled financial history, if I can put it that way, you should be able to make use of um, uh, the deferment systems that the government is putting in place. They're putting in some quite liberal um, uh, rules in place for the first uh, uh, six months or so of next year and even longer ahead, depending on when you make the import. They should be able to find a way to avoid making declarations as the goods cross through, but instead deferring it. Um, and it's really, really important to look up the government information on this. Um, now, I said about deferring declarations, uh, what you need to do is make a record in your own commercial records of uh, the, the commercial information about the product, you know, what it is, and then uh, what the customs value of that product is. 
And then within six months of the point of import, you have to make a full declaration to the UK government. Um, now, I know this is a, a lot to take in if you're new to this. You can use an, in, an intermediary, otherwise known as a customs agent, perhaps a forwarder who does that work to do it on your behalf. There will be some hoops to jump through for both you and them. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to watch out now for some uh, revised government guidance, which um, I'm giving you this talk um, uh, right at the end of September, the 30th of September. We expect any day now revised guidance on this to come out from government. And uh, this is really, really important. It would be wrong of me to try to explain it in detail now. The government is still just putting the finishing touches to the rules here. But the basic point is you're going to need to record everything you owe to HMRC for customs um, and make sure you are ready to pay it uh, later uh, after uh, up to six months after the entry into the UK. OK, now, as I said before, there will be little change at the border uh, because essentially for, for our members, for the, for the logistics community, um, as long as there is a quote unquote reasonable belief that um, um, customs paperwork has been done in the background, um, hauliers and carriers can pretty much continue as they do today um, up for a six month period. And that is really, really helpful. And we welcome this when it came out because it means that the pressure is reduced from the import flows. And as I said earlier, um, you can hopefully get an idea now of the kind of pressure that, that we'll be under for the export flows. So this is a really, really helpful move uh, from the, our government. OK, so I'm just going to finish up uh, the con main content with some thoughts about GB and Northern Ireland. You know, we are expecting um, some additional paperwork to be needed for flows from GB to N. I apologies, that's my mistake on the slide. It should say GB, Great Britain to Northern Ireland, not UK to Northern Ireland because Northern Ireland is in the UK, so forgive me for that. Um, there will be the need to do uh, safety and security declarations uh, from for movements from GB to NI. Um, that is quite complicated to do, but fortunately there will be help, help provided by the new Trader Support Service. Um, again, um, this should say uh, GB to NI, so apologies. There will be the GVMS system, which can be used for RORO um, from uh, GB to NI. So again, our members will need to ensure they're able to use that, and we're working hard to make sure that they are. Again, apologies for the error on the slide, uh, my fault. Um, and then finally, there will be new requirements for uh, sanitary and phytosanitary or SPS uh, goods uh, moving from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. Um, now, there should be some simplifications available here at uh, the, the, the day that I'm giving this talk. Um, I could not tell you what they are, uh, but we are hoping that companies moving goods from the, between their own premises from GB to NI and uh, potentially goods sold um, being moved to retail premises in NI from GB would have an easier time of it. Uh, but we are waiting for final confirmation on that um, from the government. And again, just to clarify the previous slide and more visually, there will be a full set of um, phytosanitary checks required uh, from GB to NI uh, movements. And where those checks will take place is still uh, being decided um, as well. So if you are in the agri food business uh, of any description, you please, please be aware of this. Uh, you will need to make sure that you've got um, all your ducks in a row to uh, meet uh, all the different types of checks that might be needed for moving food and animal products. Um, or plant products across to the island of Ireland. OK, so uh, final slide for me um, is uh, a little bit about, oh, sorry, final two slides uh, is about uh, advice and information. I mentioned briefly earlier the Trader Support Service, for, which is available for GB and NI. Uh, this will give you practical support if you are um, an importer to or an exporter from GB, NI, if you're in the logistics business moving goods between the two countries, uh, sorry, between the two territories, forgive me, uh, you are able to take advantage of this system. Um, there will be a service in place that will uh, do your declarations and help you, or in fact, do for you your safety and security declarations. Uh, please, please, please be aware of this and do check it out. It's just launched, it's brand new. Um, do take advantage of it, please. And um, um, also, uh, there are grants available to up, up train your uh, uh, staff in how to do customs work in general. So if you're if you're looking at UK EU in particular, this is well worth knowing about because you won't have access to the trader support 
scheme that's just for GBNI. So uh, please do take advantage of it. It's not only for customs agents, it's also for businesses that may need to complete customs declarations in the future. So again, customs capacity grants, very, very, very important and worth uh, looking for. Um, and um, excuse me, got my slides back together now. OK, and finally, finally, um, um, there are some really uh, helpful uh, sources of advice available. Um, the government have uh, tried to coordinate across gov.uk and there's a very good landing page now for um, supply chain companies doing import and export. Please go to gov.uk slash transition and use their uh, Q&A tool to find out specific advice for you. It's a, it's a very helpful tool. There's a lot of work they've done to pull things together. Uh, one thing I would recommend though is the EU Trade Help Desk. If you Google that, you'll find it. That I have found to be an excellent resource when, I invite, when I'm advising businesses about import export to the EU. Everything is from the EU point of view, but it is really useful. It's in plain English, very, very helpful as well. Um, I mentioned earlier the border operating model. Um, try and look for that. You can Google that. You'll, you'll find it straight away. Again, it goes into quite a lot of detail on how to do import and export, and that's in one uh, document. And you'll forgive me for doing a bit of a plug to what we do. Uh, we do a lot of advice and information through our member advice centre and online. So check us out at logistics.org.uk. You'll find a button on our homepage that says um, uh, Brexit advice. And you contact us through our member advice centre, which is Mac at logistics.org.uk. And um, you can see my email and some of my team's um, emails there. So with that, um, I'll say thank you very much. I hope that was useful and um, good luck and enjoy the rest of your conference session. Thank you.